And I think the library is a really good place to start. Like, mm-hmm. obviously, if you want to show off, you can use things like Google Scholar and JSTOR. You can't go wrong using the sources that they give you. It's mm-hmm. it's never going to be a bad thing. Yeah, so like at uni, I know, I don't know if you've discovered this, but they've basically said 10 years. If it's older than 10 mm-hmm. years, mm-hmm. don't use it in papers. Obviously, mm-hmm. like theorists will go back many years. Like we discussed Plato. Yeah. In so, <laughs> so like some things will have like a grounding mm-hmm. in really old um, mm-hmm. literature. But for like research papers, try and keep research papers to within the last 10 years mm-hmm. because things are changing so quickly now. Yeah. So that the when it was written is really important. Mm-hmm. And then things like who wrote the paper, if they have a history of writing papers and that have been peer reviewed and mm-hmm. support your statement, then they clearly have an interest in the topic, I would mm-hmm. say more than others. But if somebody comes along with a different viewpoint and maybe it's like not written as much, that is equally as weighty. And I know it basically says everybody's valid, but that's not uh, helpful. Yeah, I think those kind of questions are always more of a concern, especially if you're using internet sources, if you're finding information off kind of websites, newspapers, things like that. You really need to be concerned, especially maybe with newspaper articles, what newspapers written it, because there's certain newspapers where you would find them more trustworthy than others. So I think there's always a concern more so academic papers I don't worry about so much unless they're really old. But especially with kind of internet research, you really do need to be careful with whether they've got a biased opinion or whether they're just dra- dramatising it for their viewership. There's certain websites that quite enjoy to do that and never use Wikipedia. <laughs> never use Wikipedia. Like, never, no. ever use Wikipedia. It's amazing, <laughs> though. Like, literally everybody that comes out of high school, that's a go-to, mm-hmm. is Wikipedia. Yeah. And, like, I've worked mm-hmm. in groups where people have, like, done their part of the work and their references are all just mm-hmm. Wikipedia links. And you're like, we can't use I any of I had YouTube that. links for one of my groups. Oh, they were oh, all YouTube hurts. links. There's oh. modern-day high schoolers for you. YouTube. Oh, none of this. But, yeah, like, I think... Uh, Okay. One thing that I think you can find really difficult is if you don't, when you are looking for sources, it's important to start in really good places. So like mm-hmm. the university library, Google yeah. Scholar, or like JSTOR, which is like a academic paper page. Mm-hmm. These places, you know that all of the sources they give you have been yeah. peer reviewed. So uh-huh. essentially they're going to be almost fact-based. Mm-hmm. Whereas if you just randomly Google it, you get information on, on a page, but it could just be a bunch of some of these basically gathered facts from other places and put yeah. their like, um, emotional spin on it to mm-hmm. try and get you to side with them. And that's really difficult. So I think you need to try and avoid just random Google searches. Yeah, because a lot of the times as well, even if they're gathering information from other places, they're not telling you where they got the information from. So no. they're giving you facts and figures but no, you don't know if even that's come from somewhere reliable. So there's never, at least if you're reading academic papers, even textbooks, they'll have, or even books, they'll have a reference list. They can tell you exactly where they got the information from. And it's always a very good way to go on to further reading for it as well as to, if you start with something academic, then it can actually just lead you straight on to other academic things that have influenced that. And it's just a lot easier to kind of broaden your reading on it that way. But yeah, searching on Google will never end well. (laughs) Any feedback you get about your sources, about what you're using in any of your assessments, take it on board now because come next year, you're going to have to do the same thing again. So it's something that it will make so much difference if you work on it during swap and you understand where you're getting reliable sources from because it's something that you're only going to need to keep using when you go to uni so take on board feedback and practice at it this year because it really will make a massive difference next year when you're starting uni 100 percent agree um i think one thing to always kind of have in the back of your mind is just remember where is this source coming from like if you start off from a reliable source 
So like if it's been peer reviewed or if it's a study that's been tested, if there's something to back it up and it's not just opinion based, if you start off from a good place to get the information from, you can then kind of relax and think that the information that I'm going to use mm -hmm. should be of a standard that I can interpret into my essays. Mm -hmm. So that means I can use it as a reliable source in my reference list. And I think that'll just stand you in good stead. Yeah. And reference as you go. Don't yes. be like Annie. Reference as you go. <laughs> <laughs>